I offer my humblest pranams at the lotus feet of Sri Satya Sai Baba and my guru Sri Sai Maharaj. Hi, this is Patty. I touched upon before a little bit of what I think about Sri Sai Maharaj, and that is that he is the miracle. He does miracles, but actually he is the miracle. I see him as having all the divine attributes in full. And that in this human life is so rare. Of course, Sri Satya Sai Baba had this and other perhaps great, great gurus do, but I didn't hang out with them. And I've been blessed to be able to hang out with Sri Sai Maharaj. I had wanted this so much with Sri Satya Sai Baba and never got the chance. And I feel like God heard my prayer. He heard my prayer. And that's why I am allowed to be with Sri Sai Maharaj. He's giving me those things that Sri Satya Sai Baba never could. And I feel like being with him, we got, we are getting to experience what the early devotees of Sri Satya Sai Baba got to experience. And it's so magical. For one thing, I myself am a bit of a psychic person and I feel energies. I know some people can see, they can see things, but I don't see, I feel. And for me, it's like walking through the world with my eyes closed, just, just walking into walls and bumping into this and bumping into that and being affected by everything. You know, sometimes you go, oh, that feels good. And sometimes you go, oh God, that felt terrible. I mean, that's my life. But with Sri Sai, all I pick up from him is just this intense, pounding, divine energy. And it's so strong and so attractive. I mean, I want to be with God. I want to be God-like. This is my goal in this world. So for me to be in his physical presence is so magical because I'm an ex I am experiencing what it's like to be with God. When I first saw him, all I could say is, he's Krishna, he's Krishna. That's, that was his effect on me. And even so, his energy is so strong. I mean, sometimes my brain just turns to mush, you know? And after one day of being with him, if somebody says, what happened today? I'd say, I don't know. I don't remember anything. I'm, my brain is gone, you know? And when I'm near him, I... This is so strange. I don't experience him as somebody separate. I many times experience him as myself. And it's just so confusing because I'm experiencing two physical bodies, but for some somehow I see him as me. And there's me and I'm standing over there. And but there's this the separation with the bodies and that's painful. I don't want to be separate. You know, I just want to jump into him and, 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 and merge, merge in God. It's, it's an overwhelming experience. It can't understand with the mind, of course, but that's what I experience. So sometimes that can be painful because I just want to jump into him and he's, you know, he's treating me as Patty and I know him to be myself, you know. And maybe I think that's what he experiences with everybody. Everybody's himself. And he's this total, unconditional love. His love doesn't have boundaries like ego love has. His, his love is unconditional. He's there always for all of us. He feels this intense love. Now, I, I know that I've read the, the experience of, a, of a, the devotee with the guru. I've read about this. And for me, the experience is like our hearts are intertwined together. It, that doesn't make sense with the mind, I know. But this just one heart, you know, and, 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 and experiencing this love, you know. And he's not always easy. He's not. He's challenging. But he's like a loving mother. Is it loving for a mother to let the child walk in, in the traffic and get hit by a car? No. I mean, he can see what we are. He can see what our defects are. And if we trust him and surrender to him, he's there for the long haul to help us get rid of those defects, however he can. If we've given him the permission, he's going to do it because he loves us. Everything he does is loving, everything. And even though it may not appear to us in our ego brains that it's loving, it is loving. 
It's the most loving thing he can do for us is to help us get rid of our garbage. And he is compassionate. I've never seen such compassion in anybody. You know, sometimes I, I wake up and I have certain thoughts when Sri Sai sends me energy. And I'll wake up and I have those thoughts in my mind. And I say, oh, without me asking for help, he's helping me. He helps me when I sleep. I'm in America right now. He's in India and he helps me. I know when he helps me. It's it's amazing thing. He's always on the job. He's helping all of us as much as he can and as much as we can accept. That's important that we accept that love and we accept his help because he really is trying to help us. And he's so generous. I have seen him go out of his way feeding people, helping people, and it doesn't matter if it's a person or a dog or a cat or a cow. He's there. He he is there. He is his 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 heart is so huge. His compassion is so great. His generosity is so great. Feeding people, feeding animals. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. He'll he'll spend the whole day with somebody in the hospital. Now, we don't really do that so much in America. We know the nurses are there, and especially now with the COVID situation. You can't spend the whole day in the hospital with anybody. He'll be there for them. He's there for them. He's there, but he's also there for us in, in, this, in the same way. And one thing that I have never seen, never in this world, is how positive he is. He says God is full positive, and that's what he is. He's full positive. He says whatever the problem is, there's a solution. And he's over, he'll, and it's just a matter of time. Maybe he doesn't have the solution to that problem immediately, but he will have it. He will have a solution for you. It's amazing how he does that. And he's so much in the now. You know, sometimes he'll ask for something. Please give me this, give me that, help me with this. And if you can't give him that right away, he's gone off. He's moved on. And you're, you're still trying to get it to work. And he's, he's gone. And you go, well... No, he's moved on because he's in the now. You know, and you're sitting there going, well, if I could have done this, I could have done that. No, he's, he's moved on. You know, so he's always in the now, always in the now. And it's so amazing to meet somebody who's always in the now right now. right now. And he, he says that, that even thinking of being in the past is negative, and that's true. He's always in the now always in the now. It's, it's astounding, really, to meet somebody like this who's actually living this stuff, you know, because we read about it. Oh, yes, I've read about all the divine attributes. But to see that in action in somebody, it's, 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 it looks different than you think. And this is just one small example. And one thing that's so amazing about him is his humility. You know, usually when you see, you see, public figures, you know, there's no humility there. They're grandstanding. They're pointing their fingers. Look at me, look at me, look at me. He's not like that. You know, so many of these things that he's done, we don't even know about because he's not, he's not advertising. You know, he'll be sitting there and all of a sudden he'll wave his hand and give something to somebody and you go, what? Oh my gosh. You don't even know what happened because he's not pointing the finger at himself. He just, it's so natural to him. It's like breathing, you know, that naturalness and that humility that's so astounding. You know, it's, uh, it's very rare in this world to meet somebody who's so humble like this and so great at the same time. And he's so patient. I mean, <clears throat> he'll just wait and wait and wait, you know. He, I don't know how he does it. I, I pray, I pray that I have that much, that amount of patience someday that he has, but he's, he's amazing how long he'll wait for things, you know, these, these are the important things, these are the miracles, you know, and I, I can't say that I know him, I don't, you know, after all these years I've been with him, I've tried to learn everything I can from him, but even so, there's so much I don't know about him. And if you'd say, Patty, do you know him? I'd say, no, I don't. You know, because he's on a level I'm not at. He sees things in a way I don't see them. 
and he does things we don't understand. He does things I don't understand. He says things I don't understand, but he doesn't say or do things without a purpose. Everything he does is purposeful, it's helpful, it's loving, it's compassionate, and he's in the now. And uh, I feel so grateful, so grateful to be with him that I have this opportunity to be with him and the strangest thing is, it seems like those people who are the closest to him are the people that really don't see him at all. It's almost like that closeness blurs your vision where you can't see. You know, you have to stand back a little bit. And I think Sri Satya Sai Baba had the same thing going with those that were the closest are the ones that were the furthest from him. Now, I'm not saying that in Sri Sai's case, but I'm saying that there's something about the ego. If you think you're close to him, your ego tries to feel like it's equal to him, and you're not. You are not. He has worked so hard. I mean, I don't, I don't know all his past. I know he said in the Rama incarnation that he was Bharat, the one that carried Rama slippers on his head as he ruled the kingdom waiting for Rama to return. That's humility. And I know Sri Sai has mentioned a few other things he's done, but I don't know. I don't know. All I know is my experience with him, which tells me that he's everything that I long to be, that I strive to be, that I pray to be. And I'm just very, very grateful to be his devotee. Jay Sai Ram.